Hi, I'm Daniel Kashabi from Allen Institute for AI, and this is a presentation on our AMNLP paper titled Natural Perturbations for Robust Question Answering. Many NLP models still require large and rich training data sets, which highlights the importance of exploring alternative ways of building them. Dataset construction is typically formulated as a repeated task of writing new instances by human annotators. For instance, if you want to crowdsource natural language questions, one way to do this is to show human annotators paragraphs of text and based on them, ask them to write questions. This can be a costly step and potentially a bottleneck for building stronger NLP models. In this work, we explore a slightly different paradigm for dataset construction. Think of an annotation process where instead of writing new stances, we only need to apply local changes. For example, suppose you are given a question. An annotator can make local changes to this question to make it convey slightly different meanings. For instance, here the tense of the question has been changed and a temporal attribute has been added and the meaning of the question is completely different. We call this process natural perturbations since they are generated by human and often are diverse and challenging. This is in contrast to adversarial perturbations, which are often machine-based or rule-based, typically to stumble existing machine solvers. One intuition here is that creating perturbations this way is easier than writing new stances. Hence, the conjecture that we explore is that construction via natural perturbation is a more cost-efficient alternative to the traditional way of creating new data sets. And addressing this conjecture constitutes the majority of the experiments presented in this work. To investigate this conjecture, we crowdsource natural perturbations for an existing dataset, namely BullQ by Clark et al. This is done in two steps. In the first step, crowd workers are asked to minimally perturb the questions such that the changes are minimal and the answer labels are different in a good portion of the cases. This is followed by an independent verification step to verify the dataset quality. And the result is a collection of perturbed questions for bull Q, uh, which we will use for our experiments. Let's make our experimental setup more concrete. Suppose you want to build the best possible dataset for a fixed amount of budgets. You have at least two alternatives. In approach A, you can use this money in a pipeline where each instance is written by a human worker. Or in approach B, you can use some of the money to create an initial seed of instances followed by local perturbations to each of the instances in the seed set. While in approach A, all the questions are created by human workers, in approach B, only a limited set of questions are written and the majority of the data is based on our local perturbations. And since perturbing questions is often cheaper than writing them, approach B is likely to result in overall more questions. How much more questions? The answer to that question depends on the ratio of the cost of perturbing a question over the cost of writing a new question. We call this quantity perturbation cost ratio, and we are going to incorporate this parameter in our experiments. Suppose you have a construction pipeline that has a cost ratio of 0.33. That is, each perturbation would cost one third of the cost of writing a new question. For a size and subset of data resulting from approach A, or bull Q in our setting, we would like to find an equivalent cost subset of a data set resulting from approach B or bull Q perturbations. With a little bit of calculations, we can see that an equivalent cost approach B data set has size 2n, assuming that each instance is perturbed three times or clusters of size 4. To have a more complete picture, here's a plot of equal size data sets from approach B as a function of cost ratio. For smaller cost ratios, we can see that we get more questions for the same overall cost. And as you can see, when the cost ratio is 0.33, the size is 2n. In reality, the cost ratio parameter would depend on many factors, difficulty of the task, the quality of the perturbations, so it's really domain dependent variable. But it is our intuition that for many applications, perturbations are neither too expensive nor too cheap. Hence, a reasonable value of cost ratio lies in the middle of the spectrum, and that's the range that we are interested in. Let's see an experiment. Here we compare the performance of Roberta large model when trained on data collected from two different approaches. In blue, we have Roberta trained on a data resulting from approach A, writing new instances, and in green, Roberta trained on a data from perturbation of instances. Y-axis shows evaluations done on bull Q test set, and the X-axis indicates cost ratio ranging from 0 to 1. 
When cost ratio is roughly in the middle and moderately cheap perturbations, we see that a model trained on approach B has about 7% gain over the same model trained on approach A data. As we keep moving to the left, gains get bigger. And when the cost ratio is high, there is not much benefit to perturbations. Overall, we see that when natural perturbations are moderately cheap in the practical range in the middle, they result in more accurate models. We repeat this experiment, this time by evaluating the same model on different data sets. For assessing generalization, we evaluate the model on the yes-no subset of multi-RC. For assessing robustness, we evaluate on the contrast sets of bull Q. We see similar trends. For practical range of perturbation cost ratios, the data helps the model have better generalization and better robustness. We have more experiments in the paper. Before I end, I would like to highlight two closely related recent works. Notably, the work by Kushik et al, where they study the value of natural perturbations in reducing spurious correlations. And more recently, by Huang et al, where they study perturbations in the context of textual entailment, where they conclude that perturbations were not helpful for generalization in their setup. To summarize, we propose an approach for constructing data sets by expanding seed setting examples via natural perturbations. Our results demonstrate that models trained on perturbations of questions are robust to minor variations and generalize better if, and this can be a big if, the natural perturbations are moderately cheap to create. And finally, the data used for our experiments is available in the following link in case you are interested in using them. Thank you for your attention.